Perfect timing, Professor. If you don't mind, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. It's in regard to sword training. Not for myself, but... Well... To be honest, I've been teaching swordsmanship to the orphans at the monastery for a while now. Some of them saw me sparring with the knights one day. They started pestering me to teach them. They were so earnest, I couldn't help but oblige. There's much I wish to show them, but due to my own studies and training, I'm afraid my time is rather limited. Which brings me to my favor. Your swordsmanship is unmatched. I hate to ask this of you, but... Would you consider lending me a hand? Thank you, truly. I am in your debt, and I always repay my debts, I'll have you know. All of these children lost their families and homes to war or illness. This may sound a bit arrogant, but I feel it's my responsibility to help them. I lost my parents without warning, too. In that way, we're the same. In Dusker, I lost my father, stepmother, and closest friends. I didn't have many allies at the castle after that. In truth, I had only to do for companionship. I'm afraid not. My birth mother fell ill and died shortly after I was born. And my uncle... Suffice to say, we don't get along. Ah, but there were those outside the castle walls I was close to, such as Rodrigue. <laughs> Pardon my rudeness. I meant Lord Rodrigue. He is my father's old companion, and the father of Felix. On the occasions he would visit the capital, he'd take me out hunting, or on long horse rides. While Dudu is like a brother to me, Rodrigue is more like a second father. It might sound ridiculous, but he's the kind of man I hope to become one day. Someone who helps others. Someone who can reach out and save a lost soul. Oh. Please, accept my apologies for boring you with my life story. In any case, don't forget your promise, Professor. I'm counting on you. Thank you for your help the other day, Professor. Please, allow me to express my gratitude by taking you to dinner. Nonsense. Your guidance was magnificent. Just what I'd expect from a professor at this esteemed academy. I've studied swordsmanship for some time, but your mercenary skills are something else entirely. Speaking of which, there's another question I must ask you. Were you reconciled with the reality of battle from your first foray? With the killing part, I mean? I see. No. I do not carry that burden well. I doubt that will change, no matter how many years come and go. The first time I led on the battlefield, I was sent to quell a rebellion in the West. It was not a difficult fight. The enemy was not well trained and their morale was low. A swing of the lance and your opponent falls. A flash of your blade and a path opens up. That's the sort of battle it was. Easy, right? The noble family from that area sought to seize the throne after my father's untimely death. The leader of the rebel army was defeated and the rebellion quelled. This was at the height of the post-war period. I recall coming across a dead soldier's body. He was clutching a locket. Inside was a lock of golden hair. I don't know to whom it belonged. His wife? His daughter? Mother? Lover? I'll never know. He was a soldier, an enemy, someone we had cut down without hesitation. But in that moment, I realized he was also a real person, just like the rest of us. Of course, we cannot stand idly by and allow anyone to commit senseless acts of violence. Yet, in dispensing what we call justice, we take the lives of cherished family members, beloved friends. Killing is part of the job. There are times when I'm chilled to the bone by the depravity of my own actions. 
Is it? Perhaps you're right. I pray that you are. Professor, may I speak freely? When we first met, I thought of you as someone who felt no strong feelings about killing your enemies. I could never trust someone who kills without batting an eye. My heart won't allow it. But after speaking with you and getting to know you better, I can see you're not like that. Now I know, with all my heart, that I can trust you. Thank you for that. Sleep evades me, so I thought I'd get in some extra training. I was just about to finish. Perhaps it is the gloomy weather, but I am feeling the sting of wounds that should have healed long ago. The injury I got when that girl stabbed me after the battle at Gronder. Her eyes were filled with revenge. Just as mine once were. I don't know, but... I have a guess. Ah, I suppose I haven't told you about that yet. I was attacked inside the monastery the other day. It caused quite the uproar. The ones who attacked me were some of the youths we taught swordsmanship to once upon a time. It seems they were raised by a group of thieves we put down five years ago. I heard Lady Rhea took custody of them, claiming that the children were innocent. I have taken so many lives, and with each one I face hatred. During the last five years especially, my life was not so different from that of a wild beast and that young girl's brother. At some point I must have... <sighs> That is why I thought it only natural that someone would retaliate someday. Because I hated. Because I stole and... Because I killed. But with those children, it's different. We drew our blades with the best of intentions. Only to hurt them in the end. I suppose this is yet another thing we will just have to live with. Yes. As one who chose to fight, it is my responsibility to confront this anguish and the true nature of war. Until the day my life comes to an end. Perhaps. You know, Professor, there is something that I only recently realized. I never knew it could be so comforting to have someone standing by my side. Perfect timing, Professor. If you don't mind, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. It's in regard to sword training. Not for myself, but... Well, to be honest, I've been teaching... I must agree. Frankly, I'm not great with children. Some of them saw me sparring with the knights one day. They started pestering me to teach them. They were so earnest, I couldn't help but oblige. There's much I wish to show them, but due to my own studies and training, I'm afraid my time is rather limited. Which brings me unmatched. I hate to ask this of you, but... Would you consider lending me a hand? Thank you, truly. I am in your debt, and I always repay my debts, I'll have you know. All of these children lost their families and homes to war or illness. This may sound a bit arrogant, but I feel it's my responsibility to help them. I lost my parents without warning, too. In that way, we're the same. In Dusker, I lost my father, stepmother, and closest friends. I didn't have many allies at the castle after that. In truth, I had only to do for companionship. I once had people I could confide in. Family, friends, instructors, even the royal soldiers. But they were all taken away from me four years ago. 
Ah, but there were those outside the castle walls I was close to, such as Rodrigue. <laughs> Pardon my rudeness. I meant Lord Rodrigue. He is my father's old companion and the father of Felix. On the occasions he would visit the capital, he'd take me out hunting or on long horse rides. While Dudu is like a brother to me, Rodrigue is more like a second father. It might seem but he's the kind of man I hope to become one day. Someone who helps others. Someone who can reach out and save a lost soul. Oh, please accept my apologies for boring you with my life story. In any case, don't forget your promise, Professor. I'm counting on you. Thank you for your help the other day, Professor. Please, allow me to express my gratitude by taking you to dinner. Fantastic. But please think about what you'd like to eat. After all, such magnificent guidance must work up quite an appetite. I've studied swordsmanship for some time, but your mercenary skills are something else entirely. Speaking of which, there's another question I must ask you. Were you reconciled with the reality of battle from your first foray? With the killing part, I mean? I see. No. I do not carry that burden well. I doubt that will change, no matter how many years come and go. The first time I led on the battlefield, I was sent to quell a rebellion in the West. It was not a difficult fight. The enemy was not well trained and their morale was low. A swing of the lance and your opponent falls. A flash of your blade and a path opens up. That's the sort of battle it was. Easy, right? That's one way to look at it. The leader of the rebel army was defeated and the rebellion quelled. This was at the height of the post-war period. I recall coming across a dead soldier's body. He was clutching a locket, and inside was a lock of golden hair. I don't know to whom it belonged. His wife? His daughter? Mother? Lover? I'll never know. He was a soldier. An enemy. Someone we had cut down without hesitation. But in that moment, I realized he was also a real person just like the rest of us. Of course, we cannot stand idly by and allow anyone to commit senseless acts of violence. Yet, in dispensing what we call justice, we take the lives of cherished family members, beloved friends. Killing is part of the job, but even so, there are times when I'm chilled to the bone by the depravity of my own actions. That you feel the same way is more comforting than you could know. Professor, may I speak freely? When we first met, I thought of you as someone who felt no strong feelings about killing your enemies. I could never trust someone who kills without batting an eye. My heart won't allow it. But after speaking with you and getting to know you better, I can see you're not like that. Now I know, with all my heart, that I can trust you. Thank you for that. Indeed, but I was thinking about ending it here. Perhaps it is the gloomy weather, but I am feeling the sting of wounds that should have healed long ago. The injury I got when that girl stabbed me after the battle at Gronder. Her eyes were filled with revenge, just as mine once were. I don't know, but I have a guess. Ah, I suppose I haven't told you about that yet. I was attacked inside the monastery the other day. It caused quite the uproar. The ones who attacked me? were some of the youths we taught swordsmanship to once upon a time. Of course, 
I could capture the lot of them with my eyes closed. It seems they were raised by a group of thieves we put down five years ago. I heard Lady Rhea took custody of them, claiming that the children were innocent. I have taken so many lives, and with each one I face hatred. During the last five years especially, my life was not so different from that of a wild beast, and that young girl's brother. At some point I must have... <sighs> that is why I thought it only natural that someone would retaliate someday. Because I hated, because I stole, and because I killed. But with those children, it's different. We drew our blades with the best of intentions, only to hurt them in the end. I suppose this is yet another thing we will just have to live with. Yes. As one who chose to fight, it is my responsibility to confront this anguish and the true nature of war. Until the day my life comes to an end. Thank you. You know, Professor, there is something that I only recently realized. I never knew it could be so comforting to have someone standing by my side. Come now, my friend. You must stop staying up so late. Tomorrow is yet another early morning. Then again, I know that matters little. You cannot sleep, can you? <laughs> Neither can I, of course. I... I want you to know I am sorry for making you do so much when your battle wounds aren't even completely healed yet. Do not worry about me. My shoulder has healed nicely. I still have some numbness in my hand, but it should not hinder me too much. It is a lovely night, is it not? How many years has it been since I was kept awake by hopes for the future, rather than by nightmares of the past? I have had the same nightmare for nine long years. A nightmare in which I am constantly tormented by those who have died. They ask me why I have not avenged them. Why I got to live, yet they had to die. No matter how many corpses I piled up for them, in the end, their voices only grew louder. Voices loathing me, calling out to me. Their inescapable death cries ringing in my ears, clinging to my soul. Even now, I can always hear them. I am certain I will be hearing them until the day I die. But I will not cover my ears. I will go on living, and their voices will serve as a warning. As a king, and as a wretch who claimed countless lives. I will build a kingdom where the people can live in peace. I am sure she would laugh and call such talk foolish. But I wish to change this world in my own way. Well... Your Grace, things will be busy from now on. Our first order of business is tomorrow's coronation. Once a professor and student, now an archbishop and a king. How very far we have come. That is true. <laughs> to me, you will always be the one who guided me so kindly. My ally through all. My beloved... Yes. My beloved. Listen, there is something I wish to give you before the coronation. Give me your hand. Please, I beg of you, say something. If you do not wish to accept it, please, just tell me. If so, I will face the truth and walk away. What is this? Yes, I see. Right. In that case, let us exchange them, shall we? Your hands. 
Now that I hold them within my own, I see how small and fragile they are. These hands that have saved me countless... Thank you, my beloved. Your kind, warm hands. May they cling to my own forevermore. Your Highness, the hour is late. May I ask where it is you're going? I'm off to the library for a bit of research before I train. After that, a bath and bed. Very well. I shall accompany you. Uh, no. There's no need for that. I am a grown man, after all. You sustained an injury during yesterday's training. My presence may be of use to you. It was a mere bruise that will heal in no time. No need to fret over me to do. Are you dissatisfied with me, Your Highness? Please do not hesitate to correct me. And there it is again. Yes? What is it? Well, you often choose to address me as Your Highness. When we first met, you used to call me by my name. That was because I was unfamiliar with Fodlin's speech. Thinking back, such rude manners were inexcusable. To be honest, I much preferred it. I feel more comfortable being addressed by my name, rather than with the honorifics that go along with being a prince. But... I did not teach you to read and write so that you know how to address me properly. And I brought you to the Academy as my friend, not a vassal. But your highness, a vassal is precisely what I am. So much has happened since we met, yet we cannot seem to bridge this gap. So be it. I give you leave to return to your quarters. Take an early night and reflect on what I've said. Please. I couldn't possibly. I said I would accompany you, did I not? True. But I would much prefer that we take steps to ease this mindset of yours. He's always with that man from Dusker. How strange. I'll bet he used some dirty tricks to gain his favor. That's how those scoundrels from Dusker operate. What a pleasant conversation you seem to be having. May I join? Please, continue. Oh, um, your highness! I was just... I said continue. I... I... I'm sorry, your highness! <sighs> Such foolishness runs rampant. I fear it is the reality of Fargus for now. It must appear strange to them, to see me always in your company. Does it bother you to do? Of course not. However... Let me guess. You take exception to the gossip that you use dirty tricks to obtain your position. Is that it? That does perturb me. But not for my own sake. I am concerned about your highness's reputation. We're not talking about my feelings, but yours. As far as I'm concerned, those fools can talk nonsense until their tongues fall out. I am afraid I cannot agree. But if you were not concerned for your honor in this instance, then why did you intervene? Because it is my duty to do so. The day my father was killed, I saw the swine who did it. They were not of Dusker. I saw that, knew it beyond a doubt, and yet I was unable to prevent the massacre that followed. Nor could I clear away the dishonor of regicide that has unjustly clung to you and your people. I will not rest until I make up for that. I owe you. Just as I owe the spirits of those I let die. I do consider Fargus to be abhorrent. But you are an exception. You offered me your hand, and pulled me out from an abyss of suffering and death. You risked your life to save a foreigner you had never met. The moment you extended your hand, I decided that only for your sake would I live the remainder of my life. And I cast it aside in an instant if my death were to your benefit. For that reason, I cannot consider myself your friend. There are still many in the kingdom who despise the people of Dusker. It would be selfish of me to stand by your side as an equal. To do. Your Highness? Do you really believe I care one bit about the chatter of the ignorant? Of course not. Please forgive my impudence. I understand the intention of your words. Still, they grieve me. If you wish it so, you may continue to think of yourself as my vassal. I clearly cannot stop you. 
We need not be anything more or anything less. If that is what you wish to do, so be it. <sighs> Your Highness. Your Highness, you still have scars on your back. It does you no good to languish in pain. I will procure some medicine. No, it is fine. Though they are still deep, these are from nine years ago. They do not hurt any longer. And besides, it would be a shame if the scars I got from protecting you were to fade. I bear these scars proudly. It makes me think that it was worthwhile that someone like me survived. To hear you say such things. To do, you say that I saved you. But do you know that you also saved me that day? If I had been unable to save anyone, I would have been the sole survivor. I would have had no reason to keep living. But I saved someone. Saved you. That and that alone has always been my crutch. When I stood before those soldiers and their swords that day, I was prepared to die. But then, you suddenly appeared, and you shielded me. I knew then that a savior's hand could reach into even the deepest darkness. I still have not been able to repay that debt. Have you not heard a word I've said? You have saved me in countless ways. Five years ago, I did nothing but await my execution within my jail cell. Was it not you that saved me? That was nothing more than my duty as your vassal. Listen, to do. Perhaps you consider me to be someone special. But I think the same of you. You are irreplaceable, cherished. So stop saying that we cannot be friends. Stop saying such awful things. Please, do not look at me that way. You promised me you would build a kingdom that is proud to boast of Dusker blood. In this kingdom, where there is no distinction between the people of Dusker and the people of Fodlan, will I finally, without reservation, be able to call you my friend? Will I, Dimitri? To do. Yes, you will call me your friend again and again, no matter how many hardships I must endure. I will do all I can to bring about that world as well. To be your friend is what I have always wanted. Is that so? I... I am glad to hear it. But until that time, we must allow no harm to befall you. So please call upon me when you walk alone at night. And even when you go out in the day, please tell me where you are going and whom you are meeting. In the end, I suppose there is no fixing your overprotectiveness, is there? I suppose I can live with that. Hello, Felix. I see you're here to train as well. Go away. Just looking at your face makes me want to retch. <laughs> with that mouth of yours, you grow more like your brother every day. Shut up. And stop walking around on your hind legs. You're not fooling me. I cannot fathom why you seem to hate me so. Because I know what you really are. A beast craving blood. A beast craving blood, am I? I assume you're speaking of the events two years ago. Last time we met outside the Academy? I am. The way you suppressed that rebellion, it was ruthless slaughter and you loved every second. I remember the way you killed your victims, how you watched them suffer, and your face, that expression, all the world's evil packed into it. That was our first battle. I remember it vividly. Oh, something wrong? Go ahead and deny it, you wild boar. I deny nothing, Felix. Well then... I suppose the Dimitri I once knew died during that slaughter in Dusker, along with my brother. Perhaps you're right. <laughs> Hurry up and get out of my sight. I don't make a habit of talking to beasts. You don't look busy. Join me for some training, Boar Prince. And here I thought you had no desire to speak with me. We don't need to speak to clash swords, do we? I suppose not. Is that one new? 
Wait. Where did you get such a blade? <laughs> I suppose you would recognize its value. I came upon a merchant selling weapons and found this among the rest of the steel. That pattern around the edge. There's no doubt. It was forged by Zoltan, the Master Swordsmith. I'm not giving it to you. Huh? Oh, I'm just happy to have laid eyes on it. I don't suppose you'd allow me the chance to hold it. Do you take me for a fool? I'm not letting a brute like you swing it around. As though I would be careless with something so valuable. I recall when you were nine years old, you swung a sword so hard you snapped it clean in two. Come now, that was so long ago. I'm hardly the fool I was then. <laughs> so you say. Yet House Fraldaria still told that story for years. What's wrong, Felix? <sighs> How pointless. No use talking about someone who's long dead. Looking at your face is making me angry. I'm going to find a different training partner. Farewell, your beastliness. What is going on with him? I have a question for you. Answer quickly before my hand slips and I cut you in half. Always so ominous. Well, what is it, Felix? Sometimes you have an animal's face, contorted with anger and bloodlust. At other times, a man's with a friendly smile. Which is your true face? Do not waste your breath on questions with such obvious answers. They are both the real me. My father, my friends, Glenn. They all meant a great deal to me. And they were all brutally slaughtered. I alone survived. If I do not shoulder the anguish and regret they must have felt, who will? <laughs> so that's how you justify your atrocities. What do you mean? I will fulfill my duty to the late king. My old man used to say that over and over like a mantra. How nauseating. No one seems to understand. The dead won't acknowledge your loyalty. They don't care. What a load of bunk it is, pretending to serve a corpse. You're serving your own ego. You are wrong. No, I'm not. The dead are dead. The living are living. You have to respect that boundary. If you keep stringing gravestones around your neck, you'll snap. Even still, I cannot forget them, nor can I let them go. Then keep those thoughts to yourself. If you're too weak to do that, abandon your throne. Become a gravekeeper. Felix. I'm not immune to emotion, you know. Far from it. I haven't gone a day without questioning why my father and brother had to die while I survived. I'll bear this pain until the day I die, but I refuse to wallow in it. I have more important things to do than blubber for my whole life. You know, Felix, you really are growing more and more like your brother. Always so sarcastic, and constantly looking for a fight. But deep inside, more than anyone, you... What are you getting at? Oh, it's nothing. But, allow me to thank you. Your perspective has opened my eyes. <laughs> Not my intention. I couldn't stand the pathetic look on your face, that's all. I see. If you say so, then we will leave it at that. Hmm, this tent is torn. Can you please fix this one first, Ash? Absolutely. Sorry, I should probably take care of it myself, but we'd be here until sundown if I... No problem at all. I've had lots of practice with things like this. Happy to help however I can. Oh. Well, thanks. Actually, I'll fetch you something to make the job less of a burden. You like sweet things, right? Ah, uh, well, yes. Sorry, no, I can't ask you to do that. Ash, I told you, there's no need to act like that. I, I can't have someone from the royal family running errands for me. It doesn't feel right. Lenato would be furious with me, I'm sure. 
If Lord Lonato says something to you, I'll write him a letter of protest. I really don't mind, so you needn't worry about that. And while I'm being candid, I'd prefer it if you didn't speak so formally to me. I know. But to commoners like me, you're royalty. Regular folks normally only lay eyes on someone like you once or twice in their whole lives. I understand. I really do. When I ascend the throne, perhaps I should do a tour of each city. What? No, that's not what I meant. I'm at a loss. I wish to make things better, but I seem to only upset you more and more. That is certainly not my intention. Perhaps I should leave you be and take care of our shopping. Please, I promise I'll go myself just as soon as I finish with the tent. Ash, enough! Okay. I've a question. Answer me this. I don't normally eat sweets. So what would you recommend? Oh, well, if price isn't a concern for you, then you should go for the sugar candies. The ones they make in town are really delightful. Uh, oh, your highness, please, you mustn't. Got it. Sugar candies it is. I'll go and fetch some. Your Highness, please come back! I'm, I'm so sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure these repairs get done! Your Highness, sorry, I mean, Dimitri, would you, um, do you want to train together today? Ash, of course, I'm glad you asked. After classes conclude for the day, meet me at the training ground. I'll be waiting. And afterward, let's plan on dinner. We'll certainly have worked up an appetite. Oh, yes, I suppose. Uh, I mean, sure. It'd be... That is... Uh, it would be my pleasure to, uh... To dine with you? I mean, I... I uh, um... Ash. I'm sorry, Your Highness. I'm just no good at this. I'll do my best to improve. Are you still worrying over what I said to you before? I'm trying to do as you asked. But it's just completely against my nature. Trust me, I understand the urge to show respect where it is due. However, that is not the case here. Yes, I was brought up in a different family and raised in a different way, but otherwise, you and I are the same. That all makes sense, Your Highness. But I just can't bring myself to speak to you in such a casual way. Sure, when you get right down to it, royalty like you and common folk like me we're all just people, but the common folk still rely on the nobility to keep the peace and to keep them safe. Commoners pay the price for that in taxes and respect. That's what Lenato says. I suppose I can understand that point of view, but the flaw in your logic is that I am not king just yet. But that's not all there is to it. Hmm? I also respect you as a person. You carry the weight of the whole kingdom on your shoulders. You're a faultless warrior, and you're always so kind to your allies. Even me. On all accounts, I can say the same of you. But you also have a strong heart. I can't say that about myself. No matter the circumstance, you are never drawn toward darkness. That mindset of yours has done me well on countless occasions. Well, I... I do my best. So I guess... Mutual respect between us is what's really the most appropriate. Precisely. Which means there's never any need to be nervous or uncomfortable around one another. It seems we may have circled back to where we started with this conversation, but let's at least agree that we both should learn to bend a bit. How's that sound? All right. Let's start from the beginning, then. Would you like to train with me today, Your Highness? Of course, Ash. Come at me with everything you've got. I'd better avoid the training grounds. I swear, His Highness never sleeps. You're out late, Sylvain. Is it safe to assume you've been wildly carousing with women? I'm afraid that behavior simply will not do. Gah, Your Highness! Hello. No, I was not wildly carousing with women. There was only the one. Let's just forget you saw me, agreed? Unfortunately, I can't do that. It's time someone talked some sense into you. And it seems the task has fallen to me. Sylvain, I'm not saying you can't enjoy yourself at night. But you must learn the art of moderation. 
Again and again, you end up wandering the streets until the early morning. Okay, I get it. I don't need one of your lectures. I've got them all memorized anyway. I promise I'll be better in the future. I'll stop going out at night, I'll focus more on my studies, and in return, you'll go into town with me, and we'll invite some cute girls to dinner. Shall we shake on it? The way your mind works absolutely confounds me. How did you even arrive at such a notion? You need to get out more. Naive and uptight is no way to live your life. Naive and uptight? <laughs> yes, well, compared to you, I imagine I'm downright run of the mill. I'm not so sure. Most men are experienced enough to know not to give a dagger to the girl they... Will you never let that rest? It was many years ago. Perhaps a good knock on the head will help you to finally forget about it. With your brute strength, a knock on the head could knock the life right out of me. You'd better watch that temper, your highness. So how about this? I'll try to behave, and you'll try to loosen up. <sighs> if I do as you wish, will you truly promise to improve your behavior? What'd I just say? Of course I'll behave. A knight of Fargus never goes back on his word. What about you? I want to see you with a girl on your arm. I am a man of my word. I will attempt to do as you ask. But you had better uphold your end of the bargain as well. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, I'll believe it when he introduces me to the lucky girl. Oh, Dimitri, you always take even the silliest things so very seriously. This should be fun. Uh, your highness? Why are you in my room? Sorry, I need to hide in here, just for a while. I'll have you know this is all your fault. Hide? From who? It's some... Um, a girl. From the Academy. I'm sorry, it's a what? This is all because of your insistence that I go and ask a girl out. You didn't give her a dagger, did you? Is that why you're hiding? Does she have a dagger, Dimitri? Look, you kept true to your promise to improve your behavior. So I felt it was only right to make good on my side of the bargain, too. You invited a girl to dinner, and now she's chasing you around. What's the big deal? Unless... Did you use one of my pickup lines? Those words are dangerous in the wrong hands. With me, people know a line's a line and I'm joking. But you... Nobody's ever accused you of being funny. I clearly underestimated the difficulty of the task. But what do I do now? Relax, your highness. Relax. I'll sort this whole thing out real easy. All we have to do is figure out how to make this girl lose interest in you. And making girls lose interest is what I'm best at. You just wait right there, and I'll fix everything. It was my naivete that brought this about. I cannot place this immense burden on your shoulders. This is no job for an amateur. You need a professional's help. Trying to do everything yourself has never served you so well, so just leave this to the master. Even the dagger incident could have been avoided if you had just talked with me beforehand. There wasn't time for consultation. I only learned she was leaving on the day of her departure. Whatever you say. The point is, you need to learn to rely on me for these types of things in the future. For now, I got this. And if I ever need help with something you know how to help with, then maybe you can do the same for me. Sylvain. Very well. When that time comes, I promise to help you as best I can. The Knight of Fargus never goes back on his word. Isn't that right? You're a good man, Sylvain. I'm sorry to do this to you. Best of luck. Please, your highness. I've spent years honing my skills for just this situation. Watch and learn. My goodness! Sword training again today? Don't overdo it, all right? I certainly won't, but thanks for your concern, Mercedes. It's more of a hobby than anything, so don't worry too much. A hobby? How wonderful! I would probably get tired of it, but that's just me. Hmm. Didn't you say you hoped to take the sword test soon? forgot that's coming up. What should I do? To be honest, I've been a bit worried as I haven't seen you at the training ground much. Why didn't you say something sooner if you were so worried about me? 
It didn't occur to me that you could have forgotten. But you're right. I should have mentioned it. As an apology, why don't you let me help you with your swordsmanship? You would do that for me? I'd really appreciate your help. Okay, but keep in mind that since we're short on time, we may have to overdo it a little. I don't like to overdo it, but if we must, I'll try my best. It's settled. Let's begin. Don't tell me you've forgotten how to hold a sword. We have our work cut out for us. I usually just hold the sword without thinking about my grip, you know? Let's see what happens now that you've shown me the proper way to handle it. <laughs> I was nervous at first, but just look at me now! Yeah! <clears throat> well, I didn't realize offering to help you would mean risking my life. Uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I just meant to swing the sword. I didn't think it would go flying like that. I'm impressed with how quickly you can dodge. Yes, I know you didn't intend to murder me. Though that scare likely took years off my life. Maybe I'm not cut out for this whole sword fighting thing. Nonsense. It's far too early to give up. The first time I picked up a sword, I was much like you. It's true that different people are better suited to different things. But if you keep at it and refuse to give up, you're certain to improve. Do you really think so? Thank you, Dimitri. It's very kind of you to... Oh! There's a rip in your cuff, Dimitri. How do you think... <laughs> it seems I didn't dodge your sword fast enough. Don't worry, I can easily repair it. I'm the one who tore it, so I'll be the one who mends it. How does that sound? No, please don't worry yourself over it. Just focus on your exam. Mercedes, I'm sorry to ask this of you, but will you lend me a hand? What can I do for you? Oh, is the cuff of your overcoat still torn? Mending that shouldn't be a problem at all. It's pathetic, I know, but I fear my sewing skills are... Well, as you can see, they're just about non-existent. Goodness! You must have been concerned when I tore your cuff. Ah, well... That is to say... Oh. Would you please teach me to sew? I hear you're rather amazing at it. <laughs> of course I'll teach you. Don't look so heartbroken. You will? Thank you. Oh, I owe you for this. I'll go get my sewing kit. You wait here. I'm so sorry, Dimitri. I've never seen... Um... Well, it's just a bit... No need to dance around the issue. You're fed up with my clumsy efforts, aren't you? I thought you might end up bending some needles if you tried mending this on your own, but... How did you manage to break a pair of scissors? I'm just... I'm so sorry, really. I try to be careful, but with delicate work like this, I just can't seem to manage. There's no need to apologize. But you must have been uncomfortable making your way here with this tear. My inability to control my own strength is humiliating. Of course I'm useless at needlework. No giving up on yourself. You just have to practice, that's all. No matter how difficult something is, if you keep at it and don't give up, then you're sure to improve. Isn't that what you told me? Right you are. To give in to despair isn't like me. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, I'm ready to give it another go. Great! I'm glad to hear it. First things first, let's make sure the needle is actually threaded this time. No! I bent another one. You've been spending a lot of time at the training ground, Mercedes. As far as swordsmanship goes, you're like a whole new person. Thank you. I have such a great time when you teach me that improving comes naturally. It's all because of your own hard work. Compared to you, I... You shouldn't be so disappointed in yourself. You're improving too. You just need to keep at it. Well, I can hold a needle and thread without breaking anything now. That's... something. <laughs> That's a big step. When we started, you couldn't even hold a pair of scissors without twisting them apart. True. I'm sorry for being such a burden. You're no bother at all. I like sewing with you. 
It reminds me of when I was young and my mother taught me how to sew. My mother would sit with my brother and me, and we'd all sew together. Ah, oh, I really miss it. Even though I was barely better than you when I started. Did your mother like to sew, Dimitri? My birth mother? From my father's accounts, she wasn't great at it either. Oh, of course. I forgot that the Queen of Fargus passed away long ago. Yes. I don't really remember what she was like. But I remember my stepmother, always sitting by the window sewing away. I'm sure she would have been happy to teach you if you had asked. She always looked so lonely when she was sewing. So unreachable. She was kind to me, yes, but when she was like that, it was hard to talk to her. I'm not certain she would have wished to teach me. I'm so sorry, Dimitri. I didn't mean to bring up such difficult memories. Don't worry about it. If I don't talk about those things sometimes, I'll risk forgetting them altogether. And that would truly be a shame. I see. <laughs> but now I'm just going on and on about myself. Why don't you tell me more about you? More about me? Oh, goodness. I don't even know what to say. It's hard to think of something on the spot, isn't it? You could speak of... your family, I suppose. You want to know more about my family? On that topic, I'm happy to oblige. In fact, I'm so glad you asked. It's important to think about your past and share it every now and then. This might take a while, but would you be willing to stay and listen? Of course. I will listen for as long as you wish. Good evening, Dimitri. Have you come to pray? Something like that. And you? Oh yes, that's why I'm here. I love how calm and peaceful the cathedral is this late at night. It really is. Coming here on a quiet night always makes me think of those who aren't with us anymore. We've lost so many in this war, too many to count. I hope they all get to live in eternal happiness at the goddess's side. These prayers are all I have to offer. You are a kind soul, Mercedes. I think you're kind too, Dimitri. Sometimes to a fault. Kind? Me? No, not at all. I am just a killer. A disgusting monster. But why do you kill? For the sake of your loved ones? Those who have passed? Real monsters kill for selfish reasons. They're incapable of expressing sorrow when they kill. So please, don't call yourself a monster. Mercedes, I... I am scared. So scared that I will forget their faces. The people who have died. Who I have killed. I cannot let myself forget them. I know that, and yet... Whatever my feelings, it is all the act of a monster. It's sad, but the truth is that people forget. You may be afraid to forget your past, but you'll never be able to revisit it. Living in the present is the best we can do. We owe it to those who can't come back. If someone had said those words to me five years ago, I would be a different man today. What do you want to do now, Dimitri? Continue fighting for those who have died? Not as a king, but as my classmate. What do you want to do? My own dreams. I have never given it any thought. What about you? What do you want, Mercedes? I want to keep sewing and training with you, even after you've become king. I want to be your friend. But I have no right to stand beside you. Please, I can't hear any more of this self-deprecation. I just want to be by your side. Is that so much to ask? Mercedes... I want the same thing. If you allow it, I wish to stay by your side. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who feels that way. Let's spend a little more time here together, just the two of us. Good morning, your highness. Getting in some early training, huh? 
Oh, it's not too terribly early. And what about you? <laughs> oh, I'm just going for my morning walk. Hey, maybe you'd like to join me. It's a great way to start the day. Morning walk? <laughs> Funny. Gustav always kept the same habit. You really do remind me of your father, Annette. I hear that a lot. Father was always busy with work, so he wasn't around much. But when he was home, he'd often take me with him for his walks. Annette, something's been weighing on me. Something I've done terribly wrong. Your father. He worked tirelessly. I don't know if I ever saw him take a rest. I feel as though, in a way, we stole him from you. I'll admit it was a bit lonely growing up. But I understand. Father loved his work. No one ever doubted that. Actually, I've been thinking recently that I'd like to talk to you more, Your Highness. Oh? Any reason in particular? Father was a man of few words, both with myself and my mother. But sometimes he would tell me about you. So, you don't really feel like a stranger to me. In a way, it's like I've known you for a long time. Almost as though you're my big brother. Your big brother? Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I let that slip out. That was rude of me. <laughs> no, nonsense. I promise you, I don't mind at all. It's certain that my days would have been filled with more fun if I'd had a little sister like you. What kind of things did Gustav tell you about me? I'd love to hear more on this topic. Do you really want to know? Well, for one, he used to tell this story about when you were a child, and... You know what? Never mind. I have a bad feeling about where this is going. How about you forget we had this talk all together, and don't mention it to anyone? Your Highness, I have a little favor to ask of you. Of course. How may I be of assistance? Well, I was hoping you could tell me about my father. I imagine he was a very different man at home than he was at work. Ah, so you wish to hear about the Gustav that I knew. As you know, he was a knight who served the royal family since my grandfather's reign. To me, he was a teacher of martial arts and tactics. He was someone I depended on since I was a small child. But he was also a very stern and strict instructor. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. He was much the same at home. He chide us if we made mistakes, whether it was with cooking or even how we spoke. Is that so? <laughs> Funny. I suppose in front of his family he felt the need to demonstrate proper etiquette. Wait, are you saying that's not how he was around you? Even all these years later, there's something I recall with perfect clarity. It happened in the autumn of my eleventh year. Before the break of dawn, he woke me suddenly. Said he'd heard a disturbance and had me grab my bow. Then he set me and a fellow pupil loose on a dark mountain. Our only directive was to go catch a deer. As you well know, autumn in the capital is very cold. Now, imagine being up on the mountain at night with no idea what might jump out from the shadows. <laughs> that, in a nutshell, is the Gustav I knew. <laughs> I can hardly imagine that. He was completely different with me. I recall one other defining detail. He used to speak of you at every possible opportunity. Really? What would he say about me? Are you sure you want to know? There's one story he used to tell from when you were very small. No, stop! It's probably too embarrassing to bear. Is it? Uh, perhaps. Look, I'll promise to forget the stories he told me about you if you return the favor. Deal? Yes, that seems the only thing to do. It's a promise. Your Highness, I have one more favor to ask. Is this about Gustav again? I have plenty more stories about him, but perhaps it is time for you to speak with him yourself. Oh, it's not about Father this time. This time I wanted to ask about you. About me? I mean, I heard all about Father last time, but I didn't ask about you. Ah, well... I'm afraid there is not much of interest for me to tell you. Oh, it doesn't have to be funny or interesting. That's not why I'm asking. It's just that I thought I already knew you, but I'm not sure I really do. 
That day when we were reunited at the monastery, I didn't know what to say to you. So I wanted to prepare some of your favorite food. I thought maybe if you ate something that you liked, you'd cheer up a little. But when I got to the kitchen, I realized I didn't even know what you liked to eat. I see. Well, it's a little hard to say what my favorite is. I just don't really have any strong feelings about food. That said, you're pretty keen on sweet things, right, Annette? <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm at my happiest when I'm digging into a sweet treat. Oh, did you know there's a famous sweet shop in the capital? Yes. It often had long lines outside, didn't it? The castle guards often spoke of it. The sweets were so good. They cost a fortune, but I loved them. When father was still around, we all lived as a family in the capital. Since then, I've had them only a few times. Ah, how I'd love to taste them again. Say, Annette, when this war is over, where will you go? I heard that you were close to Baron Dominic back in the Academy days. That's right. But five years ago, my uncle betrayed the kingdom and went over to the Empire's side. I reconnected with father, so I'd like to live with my family again, in the capital. Also, if I'm in the capital, I'll be able to see you from time to time, right? Ah, that settles it then. We'll have to get your father working twice as hard. <laughs> Father's at a ripe old age now. I'd appreciate it if you didn't work him too hard. Oh, of course. I will keep that in mind. Your Highness, thank you for everything. This is sudden. Why so formal? You are not about to tell me you intend to leave the army, are you? Oh no, it's not that. I just had the chance to return to the capital on military business. It had really been a long time. Life's pretty hard there right now, but its old vitality seems to be returning bit by bit. If it wasn't for you, I'm sure things wouldn't be looking so promising. So... Come now, no need to exaggerate. Do not forget that I abandoned them and fled once as well. You had no choice. If you had remained in the capital, you would have been killed. If you keep thinking so dark and gloomy, you're gonna end up looking just like father. Annette, you probably do not realize, but over those five years, I took many, many lives. I slaughtered generals and officials alike with brutality you would scarcely think a human was capable of. And as I have intensified my fight with the Empire, how many people have fallen in the capital? My hands are already dripping with blood. I cannot be forgiven. You really are a lot more like father than I am. Before father left us, he used to say similar things. I don't want you to end up like him. So, I've been thinking. When this war is over, I was wondering whether I could help you with your work. <laughs> of course, I don't know how much I'd be able to support a king. What are you saying? If I leave you to your own devices, you'll forget how to laugh. We can't have that. You won't be able to do what you have to do with such a miserable look on your face. So, if you'll have me, I'd like to stay by your side. If you're sad or suffering, I'll just starve you until you muster a smile. Starve me? <laughs> hey, you weren't supposed to laugh at that part. I thought a lot about this. <laughs> Sorry, I could not help myself. Certainly with you around, I will not have any cause to frown. By all means, join me, Annette. And never lose that sweet smile of yours. Yes, I promise. Thank you for sparring with me, Your Highness. It seems despite how hard I've worked, I'm still no match for you. Oh, there's no need for such humility. Thanks to all of your hard work, you're improving rapidly. If you're going to praise me, it should at least be after I've won a match against you. You know, Ingrid, I may be the victor when we cross spears on foot like this. But on horseback, your handling of a lance is far superior. Can't I be allowed to have my own area of expertise? No, I cannot allow that. It's my duty to get stronger, to fight with all I have in defense of the kingdom and its people. Such high stakes. <laughs> By the way, where did you learn that fierce jab of yours? I'm pretty sure the only other person I've seen perform that move is Glenn. So you recognized it. 
Yes, he shared much with me. I thought as much. I never imagined I would be on the receiving end of one of his techniques again. Glenn and I once studied under the same instructor. I've sparred with him more times than I can count. Ah, uh, yes. He was never short on praise for you. Lord Dimitri is incredible. Such skill. There's no way I'll ever outmatch him. Things of that sort. Well, now. He never said any of that to me. Well, he was Felix's brother. That family's not big on displays of affection. That is true. We spent about as much time arguing as we did training. I can't believe it's been four years since the tragedy of Dusker. Since we lost Glenn along with so many others. So it has. Time moves quickly. Things have changed so much. Despite the sorrow, I intend to become a powerful knight. A knight like yourself. And like Glenn. I will do so for the sake of my homeland, the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, and for all who have died protecting it. To that end, I hope you will spar with me again in the future, Your Highness. It would be my pleasure. After all, I value our training sessions as much as you do. Ingrid, I've been doing some thinking, and it occurs to me that I owe you an apology. What? Why do you seem so serious? In a just world, you would be happily married to Glenn. He... He truly loved you. And it's clear that you cared deeply for him as well. But on that awful night, he died right before my eyes. I could do nothing to prevent it. In a way, I'm responsible for you losing the joyous future that should have been yours. I know my words can change nothing, but... I'm so sorry, Ingrid. No, Your Highness. There's... There's no need to apologize. Glenn's death... It still doesn't feel real. I always looked up to Glenn. He was the very picture of a perfect knight. Noble and virtuous. In the end, he laid down his life. The ultimate sacrifice. I feel proud of him in ways that words can't quantify. Proud? Truly? That's right. I feel proud that he died for those he was sworn to protect. Proud that he passed from this realm to the next as a perfect knight. Are you really trying to turn his needless death into an ideal to uphold? Ugh, you and he are so alike. Needless death? How can you say that? Glenn gave his life for you, for everyone, and this is how you speak of his sacrifice? You weren't there. You didn't witness his last moments. If you had, you wouldn't feel that way. I don't care to hear your interpretation of his final moments. He was and will always be an ideal knight. You would do well to rethink that ideal, my friend. Pardon me? He served in your guard. He took great pride in what he did, in protecting you. The very least you can do is not spit on his memory. If you'll excuse me. What is the matter with me? Your Highness, I've come to apologize. I mismanaged my feelings and got carried away. I've been thinking about what might have made you say the things you did. I was so caught up in the moment, and in my own feelings, that I didn't think of what yours might be. No, I should be the one to apologize. I did not intend to say such things. I lashed out like a child. You were right to rebuke me. I am disgusted by my own inability to express myself. Will you allow me to explain? Of course. At the tragedy of Dusker, I saw countless corpses. Of course, I saw his, too. Glenn's. Ingrid, I doubt you would have been able to see him. They were unable to bring his body back, after all. He must have died an agonizing death, full of pain and regret. That is what I saw in his face. In that wasteland, there were no beautiful, proud deaths that could have been written about in heroic tales. Not one! I do not want you to die a death like that. Not even for the sake of loyalty or duty. A king must at times order his soldiers and knights to fight and die on his behalf. Their lives must be used for the greater good. This is something any good king understands innately. 
Any king who doesn't allow people to die on his behalf is too soft to rule well. You leave me little room for argument. Have I disappointed you? No. I chose to serve you because of how you are. As your knight, I will stand by your side and uphold your soft-hearted ideals. What has changed, Ingrid? You were so obstinate the other day. I've realized that I haven't been facing a very important truth. Because of you, I can finally move on. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> Finally, you score a point against me on the ground. You have improved, Ingrid. That was nothing more than a fluke. My technique was horribly sloppy that last round. It does not matter what sort of technique it was. You won. If this had been a real battle, I would be dead. You wielded your lance well, without any hesitation. Has your approach changed? You may recall when I said I'm now able to move on, because of you. I remember. What did you mean by it? That I finally understand a truth about Glenn. It sounds as though he died with a heavy heart. A heart that carried regret. I had suspected as much. But instead of acknowledging it, I twisted my memory of him to fit an ideal I've been upholding. I see. Your Highness, I will not sacrifice my life for anyone. But perhaps instead, I can live my life for someone. I will pledge my life to you. And how exactly am I meant to interpret that? However you please, your highness. <laughs> oh? Well then, Ingrid, when this is all over, I want you to... Um, to support and defend me. As my knight, I have been thinking of telling you this for a long time. We get along well, you and I. As your knight? Yes, yes, of course. Of course I will. I intended to do so for your... For the sake of the kingdom. Together, your highness. You and I. Our first order of business. Putting this tragic war to an end. Yes. And while we're at it... Do not die on me, Ingrid. Promise me that. Yes, your highness. I swear it on my lance. Hey, Dimitri! I heard about what you did. Hmm? What are you talking about, Raphael? Some folks are saying you lifted a whole wagon on your own. And you made it look easy. Ah, <laughs> I suppose I do recall something like that. I happened to cross a toppled wagon, you see. Those people needed my aid, so I aided them. But what of it? You gotta teach me your training secrets. I want to build muscles like that. You want my training secrets? So you can build more muscle? I'm sorry, but I honestly don't think I can offer anything that would help you. The royal family has always been blessed with immense strength. I imagine it's largely due to our blood, and perhaps our crests. No, oh, come on. You don't have to keep your secrets from me. As I said, I really wish I could help, but... Look, logistics aside, why are you so interested in my strength to begin with? I want to be really strong like you. I don't just wanna, I gotta. I've had to provide for my little sis ever since our parents died. If I want to do that, I gotta get strong so I can become a knight. I see. In that case, I suppose I could try to help you. Though I meant it when I said I'm not sure I have much to offer. Really? Oh, yeah! I'm no expert on the topic of building muscle. However, for greater strength, you could try devoting more time to spear and sword training. You probably already know that, huh? Eh? Of course you do. Let's see. As a child, I was forced to train by running through the mountains all night in heavy armor. You had to run all night in heavy armor? That sounds tough. What else did you do? Aside from that... I trained by lifting large boulders, or carrying multiple barrels filled with rocks. Got it! I'm gonna give that a try right now! Wait a moment! You don't want to push yourself too hard too quickly. You'll damage yourself if you're not careful. You shouldn't worry so much. I know my limits. My muscles are gonna be so big after this! 
Perhaps I should not have told him all that. Uh, Dimitri. Raphael, what's the matter? You look awfully pale. I think... I think... I think I'm gonna die. What in the world happened? My, my whole body. It's stinging and, and aching. I've never felt anything like it. I feel weak all over. I don't have the energy to do anything. This has never happened to me before. Well, what are you waiting for? Get yourself to the infirmary. If you can't walk, I'll carry you there. This could be very serious. Thing is, I already tried going there. But I didn't see Manuela or the monks. Dimitri, listen. If anything happens to me, I need you to take care of my little sis. Steady yourself, Raphael. Protecting your sister is a task that will fall to you alone. Is that not why you wish to become a knight? At this rate, I won't even be able to fight alongside everyone else. Uh, of course this happens after I spend all night training. Wait, you were training all night? Raphael, tell me exactly what sort of training you did last night. Well, first I ran all across the mountains while carrying a gigantic boulder. Then I found a big log and lifted it a few hundred times. After that, I ran 50 laps around Garrig Mach wearing heavy armor. Then I tied a rope to a barrel full of rocks and swung it around for a while. Right. I believe I get the picture. And is this something you've been doing every night recently? I train every day. But yesterday, I decided to try out some new techniques. I took the ideas you gave me and used them to come up with a whole new regimen. I see. Raphael, listen to me very carefully. Your ailment is ordinary muscle pain. Muscle pain? I don't understand. After a training session like that, even my muscles would probably be aching. Didn't I tell you not to push yourself too hard? Wait, wait, wait. If this is muscle pain, does that mean I hurt my muscles? Well, you caused them to hurt, sure, but that doesn't mean... I can't believe I was so mean to my muscles. I need to make it up to them. I gotta go eat some food so my muscles can get the nutrition they need. And I can't waste any more time talking about it. Hold on, what happened to your muscle pain? And if you eat too much, you'll give yourself a stomach ache. Uh-oh, he's headed straight for the stairs. I thought he could hardly walk with his muscles in that state. Ah! My muscles! Let this be a lesson to you, Raphael. There are times when even your muscles can betray you. Marianne? Oh, Dimitri. Oh, I'm sorry for disturbing your prayer. There's no need to apologize. I just finished. I see. What were you praying for? I was simply asking the goddess for forgiveness. Forgiveness? For what? I put our soldiers in danger during the recent battle. What matters is that they came back safely in the end. You shouldn't blame yourself for that. It's true, but you were injured when you came to our aid. That? It was just a scratch. A small price to pay for your safety. But... I would never regret helping an ally, even if it meant losing my own life. No, no, that's wrong. How so? It's just all wrong. You have my thanks for helping in the battle, Dimitri. But I'm afraid I have to ask that you keep your distance from me. Is that so? Yes. Forgive me, but I will be there for you. Whether you want me to or not. I'm sorry. Marianne? Oh, yes? May I sit here? There isn't another open spot. Um, you may. I'm sorry. I should have eaten in my quarters. I know you asked me to stay away from you. No, it's fine. 
About the other day, when you said you didn't regret risking your own life. I apologize for whatever foolish thing I said to upset you, truly. But may I ask what happened? It's just... There is only misfortune for anyone who comes near me. Misfortune? I'm afraid so. Especially those with complete disregard for their own safety. Ah, so I didn't defend you. You're trying to tell me I should be more concerned for my own safety. Well, I suppose I could improve in that regard. As for you causing misfortune, I think that's far from the truth. In fact, I find you to be a lucky charm of sorts. Me? Lucky? I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that at all. My entire life up until this point has been nothing but a string of unfortunate events. But misfortune finds us all. Perhaps those around you have suffered or even perished. But look at you. You're still here, alive and well. That's... It doesn't feel good, does it? To be the one left behind? You feel guilt for not dying along with the others. How did you know? You and I are the same. Maybe you should fear being cursed with misfortune for coming near me. <laughs> <laughs> a smile and a laugh. Coming from you, that's a rarity. This must be my lucky day. I just find the idea amusing. It's strange to think that someone like you could have anything in common with me. Is it so terrible a thought? No, no, it's not that. It actually makes me happy. As though there's finally someone who understands how I truly feel. Hmm. Spared again. So it would seem. I told you that you were extraordinarily lucky. Sometimes I think that must be true, but why me? Is this the goddess's way of telling me to make something of myself? There are so many others who are much more deserving of life. I often think the same of myself, especially after battles where many lives were lost. But I must go on living. I cannot give in to death so readily. It is my duty to atone for my sins and to pay for the lives I've taken. I suppose... That must be why the Goddess allows me to live on. Is there a reason she allows me to live? Only you can know that. But I believe there is a reason. Marianne, life is difficult. It is a burden. It feels terrible to continue standing when so many others had to fall. If that is so, then carry on as you are. There is no need for you to force yourself to smile as your soul bleeds. But please, whatever you do, do not give up on yourself or your precious life. What do you mean? If you were to die, I would be devastated. <laughs> you never have been easy to read. Is that so? Everyone says that I need to cheer up. But you may be the first person to tell me not to. Your life must also be difficult for you to understand my position. So it is. I often feel I am not strong enough to live it. I think our difficulties have brought us closer together. Do you? Absolutely. Please, Dimitri. Promise you'll live through this war and long after. I don't know what I'd do with myself if we lost you. As long as you are carrying on, I have yet another reason to carry on myself. I promise to the goddess of Fodlan that I will never give you cause to despair. Oh, are you on cooking duty today, Flay? <laughs> That's unusual. Indeed I am. I have been working away on this meal for hours now. The only thing is, each time it is my turn to tend to the meals, those in the dining hall seem to miraculously become very busy and evacuate the premises. I make the food, but nobody is ever here to eat it. I do not understand what the issue is. It is such a waste. Even my brother seems to evaporate every time I am in the kitchen. It is quite peculiar. 
Well, you're in luck. I've just finished training and am positively ravenous. If you don't mind, I'd love to sample your cooking. Really? I mean... <clears throat> yes, yes, please, have some. It is not perfect, but I am certain it will taste quite nice all the same. I'm sure it will be great. Thank you, Flame. There were a few suspiciously crunchy bits here and there, but other than that, it was fine. You... you liked it? Wow, nobody has ever liked anything I've cooked! <sighs> if I cannot get anyone else to eat this meal, though, it is going to spoil and go to waste. <laughs> it is no secret to me that I am not very good at cooking. Say, Flane, may I have a second helping? You... you actually want... more? Of course. I wouldn't want it to go to waste after all the effort you put in. This kind of mishap can happen to anyone, you know? Don't let it get you down. Besides, I can tell you put a lot of love and dedication into preparing this food for everyone. That alone makes it taste good. <laughs> there is no need for false flattery. The few times I have asked my brother whether or not he enjoyed my cooking, he could not even give me a straight answer. My own brother! I speak nothing short of the truth, always. It was delicious, and I look forward to eating it again sometime. I'll agree there is no need to make enough for everyone, though. If you like, you could just cook enough for me. Hmm, perhaps. I hope you enjoy the rest of the meal. Why are you out and about so late, Dimitri? Ah, uh, hello, Flane. I could ask you the same thing. Me? I was feeling restless and came here to think. I see. I'm here for the same reason. <laughs> How funny. But... are you feeling well? You look fairly pale. It's nothing. I just have a bit of a headache. Oh my. Headaches are quite troublesome, are they not? I am sure it will subside soon. Actually, I am quite talented when it comes to healing magic. If you will allow me, I will have you feeling better in no time. That's kind of you, but I'm fine. But... why not? Have I offended you somehow? This headache is something I've dealt with for a while now. Ever since my family and friends were murdered before my eyes, I must never forget that day. I must never allow their deaths to be forgotten. I feel this headache is a reminder of sorts. Of those I failed to protect. And of their murderers who still roam free. I see. That would explain your somber demeanor. Still, I do not agree with all you are saying. I feel that if I were your father or any of your dear friends whom you lost, I would want you to let go of me eventually. I would never want someone whom I care deeply for to be pained by the loss of me for eternity. And I doubt they would want that either. Perhaps. Unfortunately, they have left this world, so I can no longer ask their preference. We cannot ask them directly, but we can imagine how they might have felt. You know who they were as people. As for me, if I am ever to be but a memory in your future, I want you to remember me in a way that brings you joy. I would want you to smile when you recalled me, to feel warmed by the notion that I cherished your company. I cannot imagine I am the only one who feels this way. Surely anyone who loved another would wish only for their peace and happiness. <sighs> I... must apologize. I was out of line, clearly. I must get some rest now. Please do not stay up too late yourself. Good night, Flane. And... thank you. Up this late practicing with your lance, are you? And what about you? Have you got something on your mind again? You really should go to bed. It is chilly out, and you could catch cold. What's the matter? Have you been having nightmares? Well, in a certain sense, yes. Can you spare a moment? Of course. Thank you. 
I want to apologize to you. When last we spoke, I mishandled the situation. Your words that night touched me deeply. It felt as though I had been punched in the gut. But more importantly, I think I owe you an apology. I lied to you. You did? Do you recall when I ate that meal you cooked and I told you it was delicious? The truth is that no matter what I eat, I can scarcely taste it. I have not had my sense of taste for nine years now. <laughs> my cooking certainly is not something people often compliment me on. I am sorry. When I said the food was good, I was just saying what I thought you would want to hear. An apology is not necessary. You are only trying to be kind, after all. In the end, I am not sure it was kind. Just the same, it was nice to hear. Oh, hey! I have an idea! What if you sampled some really pungent food? Or something extremely spicy? Maybe that would... Flame. Yes? I like your cooking. I cannot taste it properly, but in my book, it is truly delicious. No need for the flattery. Anyhow, maybe someday you will get your taste back. I hope then you will be able to compliment me sincerely about my cooking. Aww. Flame? What is the matter? Is something weighing on your mind again? It is freezing out here. You should be bundled up in your warm bed. Listen, Dimitri. The truth is, I am afraid of sleeping. Afraid of it? Why? I am afraid that when I close my eyes, I shall fall into a very deep sleep. One from which I cannot wake up. For years upon years. Then, when I finally awaken, everyone I know and love will be long gone, vanished with the sands of time. I am sure it seems silly, but try as I might, I cannot shake this fear. I cannot quite grasp what you are describing, but I can promise you one thing. No matter how many years go by, I will always remember you. I appreciate the sentiment. Even so, one day... Listen carefully, Flane. There is something I have been wanting to tell you. Oh? What is that? You know that dish you made the other day? It was so sweet, it made my tongue go numb. I am not so sure that is a good thing. Well, I could only really taste the first bite, so I may have been imagining it. But still, I was so happy. That moment will always put a smile on my face whenever I remember it. I could never forget you, Flane. I promise. I... Besides, we have fought side by side. We are friends. I am sure all of the others would say the same. <sighs> Is something the matter? You really do not pick up on subtle cues, do you? Cues? Well... It is all a part of your charm, I suppose. With you here, I finally feel I can sleep without having to worry at all. <sighs> hey, wait! I did not mean for you to fall asleep right here. Someday you... appreciate... food. Flame... <sighs> she is hopeless. Here you are, Gilbert. Have you finished your prayers? Ah, oh, your highness. I... this... Ah, uh, but you and I are the only ones present, so I suppose I should not call you Gilbert. Gustav... It's been a while, hasn't it? Around three years, I believe. Your highness, I must deeply apologize for leaving the kingdom without permission. I was... There is no need to explain, old friend. I can guess at your reasons. The tragedy of Dusker. You felt responsible for that incident and sought respite in the Goddess, abandoning your name, rank, and homeland in repentance. Am I right? I have no excuses to offer. This... it was all I could think to do. 
I always knew you for a pious man, and I figured that if you were to leave, this is where you would end up. You have changed much. Your face does not have the same resolve it once did. If I may, your highness, you have changed as well. I can't disagree. It was my duty to protect his majesty, your father. Naturally, that also included Lady Patricia and yourself as well. My father and mother are gone. No amount of regret will bring them back. My dreams are haunted by the thought that had I arrived at Dusker more swiftly... You saved my life at Dusker. I have only gratitude for you, no blame to speak of. Return to the kingdom, Gustav. I need your strength to help rebuild the rotten husk that Fargus has become. Please, I beg your forgiveness. But there is no place left for me in that land. I see. Though much has changed, your stubbornness remains. I have no desire to trouble you. If you do not wish to return, that is your choice to make. But I do advise you to at least visit the place of your birth. If only for your family's sake. Yes, Your Highness. Thank you. I appreciate your concern. Your Highness, it falls to me once more to instruct you in the ways of battle. It does not befit a leader to fight on the front lines. I would ask that you refrain from such conduct in the future. I have not had to weather your lectures in many a year, and here I thought you were avoiding me. That is... a separate matter. You have a duty to consider the value of your own life. Your words ring true, of course. I admit, I was a bit careless out there. However, I have always been a man who is good for nothing but war. To best support our cause, I must carve a path through the battlefield with my own hands. I truly believe that will lead us to victory. Why the dark expression, Gustav? Do my words trouble you so? You remind me of your father. His Majesty once said the same thing more than a decade ago, during the Northern Campaign. In you, I see his manner and I hear his words. You grow more like him with each day's passing. And in you, I am reminded of my failure and my duty to him. I do not wish to speak of that matter. As I said before, I feel no resentment toward you. Even so, you have changed since that fateful day, Your Highness. Perhaps too much. I worry that in your pain, you have locked away your true feelings. Your passion is dulled, and your vigor faded. You want to hear my true feelings, Gustav? Then let me ask you this. Why did you save my life that day? Why did you not allow me to die along with the others? If you truly wish to atone for your sins, then take my life, here and now! You would ask me to perform the unthinkable. You are the future of Fargus. Your kingdom needs you alive. That I was able to save you is my only sense of salvation. Your Highness, I repeat myself. Consider the value of your own life. If you continue risking all, be it on the battlefield or by issuing mad orders such as this, I will be forced to save you from yourself. I see. So, you will continue to protect and serve me, will you? In that case, when I assume the throne, I will order you to work for me in the kingdom. Your Highness, no, please. My father would be happy to see such a day. Perhaps I will ask you to instruct me further in the ways of battle, when that time comes. If I wish to atone for my sins, I must take your life? Deception has never been your strong suit, Dimitri. Or do you think I cannot see? You must know I would take my own life before I let anyone harm you. What brings you here at this hour, and with sword in hand no less? Hardly the appropriate attire for prayer. I am not here to pray to the goddess. I am here to atone for my sins. I see. You are your father's reflection. He was never skilled at deception either. Your demand that I take your life was sincere. 
no matter how you might pretend otherwise. How astute of you. So, you think you can see right through me, do you? I watched over you from the day you were born. And that is why it pains me so to do this. It is like taking the life of my own son. I am sorry to burden you with this. But you have my gratitude. Now, make it quick. Yes. You really are a cruel man. You believe death will bring an end to your torment? That is nothing but an act of cowardice. No matter how difficult, no matter how painful, your duty to your people is to continue fighting. Even if those who have died, the many whose lives I have taken, would rather see me dead? Many pray for your death. However, there are far more who need you here. Alive. In Fargus. In the monastery. In this army. And here. Standing before you. To serve you. To bear your torment alongside you. That, your highness, is my atonement. Look at my hands. They are shaking. When I saw your sword swing before my eyes, for the first time, I did not wish to die. Many times I have felt that I cannot afford to die, but this was the first time I truly feared the prospect. Tell me, Gustav, is it really right for me to live? It is, Your Highness. It truly is. I... Thank you. Your Highness, missing the day's training? How unlike you! I had intended to train, but this rain is unrelenting. Yes, it's really coming down out there. Makes it hard to go outside, I suppose. It's pouring so hard, I can't help but feel... poorly. <laughs> uh, yes. Quite. <laughs> Sorry, that one was pretty bad. I think this weather is putting a damper on my sense of humor. Hmm. At any rate, did you need me for something? Ah, yes. You seem to have the time to spare, so would you help me organize our stock of weapons? You must know a thing or two about weapons, and I bet you're no slouch at physical labor. Of course, I'd be happy to help. I was just hoping for a useful way to pass the time until the rain lets up. I appreciate it. I don't know how I do it all on my own. You know, it's great that you're willing to help with this kind of thing. Some nobles are so self-important. You're a real go-getter, your highness. Or should I say, your spryness? Maybe that was disrespectful. <sighs> He's going to lop off my head. He'd better go ahead and do it. I can't bear the silence. Uh, listen, your highness, that joke, I, uh, I didn't mean to... <coughs> I, I just... <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, oh my, I'm sorry, Alois. <laughs> Wait, you mean you actually found it funny? Oh goodness, not at all. I see. But when a joke is unfunny to a certain degree, it somehow comes full circle into hilarity. That's not exactly what I was going for. Still, I don't think I've ever seen you laugh so loudly. It's true. Laughter is not one of my strong suits. I actually can't recall the last time I laughed like that. Alois, perhaps you should focus your efforts on honing this comedic talent of yours. This talent? Is that your way of saying I'm no good at telling jokes? <laughs> My apologies. I should refrain from commenting on the quality of your jokes. What's important is that they bring joy, right? That does it. Next time I make you laugh, I'm gonna make you admit it was a good quality joke. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to cook up some top-notch rib ticklers. 
Alois, what about organizing the weapons? Oh, he's gone, isn't he? Mm. We should have been more careful. Those monsters really got the better of us. I must apologize, Alois. If only I had paid closer attention. No, no, it, it's all right. We've got more important things to do than dwell on our mistakes. Ah, it hurts. Ah, I don't want to die yet. Ugh. How did it come to this? Indeed. With morale this low, we may yet have trouble making it back to the monastery. We weren't expecting that attack, after all. It gave us a nasty shock. So we can't just leave. The knights could use some inspiration. Listen up, everyone. We're going to carve ourselves a safe path back home to Garrig Mach Monastery. But first, I want you all to hear me out. Alois, what exactly are you... A long time ago, Captain Geralt and I defended a small village from a band of thieves. After we defeated those hoodlums, the captain observed how ugly they were. Such hideousness ought to be illegal, he said. If it were up to me, I would have banned it. Then he walked up to the leader of the village and handed over a big bag of coins. A gift from the thieves, he said. They were dying to give it to you. Sir, I'm not sure this is the time for... <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Oh, Alois. How do you come up with those jokes? <laughs> that last one was positively hilarious. Oh, I don't know. I'm just a natural. <laughs> this is... I don't even know what to think right now. I guess we should just join in. Dimitri, just the man I was looking for. I wanted to thank you for your help. My help? I'm not sure what you mean. Don't tell me you've forgotten your help when the monsters attacked. Ah, you mean the day you came up with those terribly hilarious jokes. Hmm. When you put it like that, I feel like you're the one who's kidding. Even I knew those jokes were awful. I was trying to think on my feet to, to raise the soldiers' spirits. Well, you certainly succeeded. Our journey home was much easier as a result. As for myself, I am not much of an orator. I could never have done the same in that situation. You're the only reason the gags didn't fall flat. If you hadn't started laughing when you did. Well, I admit the jokes themselves were... perhaps not your best work. But there is no harm in that. Even when you stumble, your good humor brightens everyone's mood and wins their trust. Yeah? You think? Hm. I never thought about it like that. But if you say so, maybe I do have a knack for this. <laughs> As one who is bound to lead, I could stand to learn a lot from you. I am often told by both friends and subordinates that I am... without humor. Alois, if you would be so kind, could you teach me to tell jokes? Sure, I'm happy to help. If you want to be as lousy a joker as I am, you could surely find a better teacher somewhere else. In the stables, for example. No. I would like to learn from you, Alois. I see. Well, I guess I can't say no. I hope you're ready to become a wizard of wit. I will endeavor to be a good student. Very good. That's what I like to hear. Soon you'll be cracking wise like there's no tomorrow. Everyone will think you're a pun in the neck. Hey there. At it again, are we? It feels like I see you training here every day. It's my daily routine. I'm ill at ease until I've held a weapon in my grasp. <laughs> you said the same thing when you were little. <laughs> right you are. 
I've been meaning to come and talk to you properly for a while now. I was about to say the same thing. How long has it been? A decade? More? That was in Ferdiad, as I recall. You were just a little pipsqueak. You really have grown up, haven't you? I'm not sure it was quite that long ago. Not really. But it matters not. I remember those times well. Particularly your first words to me. Look at that young maiden wielding a giant lance. How adorable. Oh, don't look at me like that. I was thrown off by your haircut, that's all. It's all water under the bridge. Now, back then I was quite furious about it. My father did give me a stern reprimand for speaking so rudely to a prince. But then, I never had a chance to apologize. I was always getting into trouble back then, just like the incident in Dusker. Speaking of... Do you ever think about going back to House Karen? Do you... Cassandra? No. I'm happy with the life I have. No offense, your highness, but I don't fight for king and country anymore. I fight for Lady Rhea. It doesn't bother you? Being labeled a criminal? You're worried about my life as a fugitive from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Don't worry about me. I'm here because I want to be. It suits me far better than the life I'd otherwise lead, as a noble lady of the kingdom. Is that so? How about you? You've never wanted to roam free? To enjoy life as an ordinary knight, unshackled from all those princely obligations. I can't say the thought has never crossed my mind. However, I am the son of a king. It's not possible for me to put my own desires before the good of the kingdom. Ah, you're too serious for your own good. How'd you become such a stiff? Don't worry, I've been working on that. Stretching is a part of my daily routine. <laughs> if you can joke about it, there's hope for you yet. Another day, another training session, I see. You're quite dedicated. And practicing with the sword today. You weren't any good with it when you were little, as I recall. And who told you that? Lord Rodrigue mentioned it to me. He said you used to swing your sword so hard that you'd break it. That... I've had plenty of time to improve since then. Now I count swordplay as one of my specialties. Care to see for yourself? Well, I can't just take your word for it, can I? Let's see what you've got. Well, I'm impressed. You're better than I expected. <laughs> I could say the same of you. I suppose we students still have much to learn. No need for false modesty. We fought as equals just now. You're strong, and your form is excellent. You're clearly an experienced fighter. But you're greedy. You can't be so impatient to win. It'll come at a grave cost. Greedy? I see. I'll take that note to heart. You have my thanks for the instruction. Ah, it returns. The formality, the stiffness. Anyway, after we're through here, I might head into town for some food. Care to join me? I appreciate the invitation, but I have certain duties I must attend to this evening. Of course you do. Never mind about my plans, then. I thought you'd say that. You have the same sense of responsibility as I do. Hmm, you think so? I didn't want to push you to join me. We can just do it another day. I'll confess, I'm taking a shine to you. I'd like to talk to you more. I would like that as well. Ever since I saw you wielding a sword all those years ago, I've been following in your footsteps. To be able to stand with you and cross swords is quite a... Hey, hey, slow down. Where did all this come from? You're embarrassing me. That's enough chatter for now anyway. Let's get back to sparring. This time with lances. I won't hold back. Show me what you can do. Right. Prepare yourself. That was delicious. Wow, I'm full. Nothing beats a big meal after a training session. Okay, what's up? You seem distracted. Oh, uh, my apologies, Catherine. I was just wondering whether you had any desire to return to Fargus. No, I haven't even entertained the idea. My loyalty lies elsewhere. May I ask why you have devoted yourself to Lady Rhea? It's simple. I adore her. Lady Rhea isn't just kind, but strong and courageous. 
I think she's a wonderful, beautiful person. More so than anyone else in the world. Wow. I'm not sure I can compete with that. Heh. <laughs> you can't. My reluctance to return to Fargus isn't about you, though. Ever since I met Lady Rhea, going back just hasn't been an option. That is a shame. I am certain Fargus could use your help in the near future. House Karen is one of the most sterling noble families after Fraldarius and Gautier. It would be reassuring to know that you had taken up your position as head of that house. Uh. Is something wrong? You need someone who's like me, but more noble. You're so stern and serious all the time. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not going back. Besides, my father is alive and well, fulfilling the duties of House Karen. I have plenty of capable brothers and sisters who can take over after him. I'll keep serving Lady Rhea here, and you'll bring the kingdom together at the capital. We have to direct our talents wherever they're most useful and most needed, right? Well, I... Anyway, early day tomorrow. Don't want to stay up too late. You better go to bed. What's wrong, Dimitri? Your sword plays oddly sluggish today. Uh, sorry. If you were hungry, I'd get you something to eat. That's not the problem, though, it seems. It's not much fun fighting you when you're so far below your usual standards. Do not worry. I will be myself again in a moment. Are you worried about something? Tell me. This war... Once it is over, I will have to go back to the capital. And you will remain here as a Knight of Seros. Yes, if we're both still alive. When that happens, there will not be many chances for us to have these little duels of ours, will there? I suppose not. Garigmach and Ferdiad are quite far apart. It will be hard to get by without them. I've grown very fond of these sessions. Wow, you sure know how to draw out a conversation. Just say what's on your mind. Please, return to the capital with me. That's it? Return to the capital, just like that, with no explanation? You were the one who told me to speak frankly. Yes, I've also told you that I'm devoted to the Knights of Seros and wouldn't dream of leaving. It'd be one thing if you were asking me to return to my family. Why summon me to the capital? I just want to be near you. Oh, please. Don't waste your romantic words on me. Save them for a girl you really like. I was just saying what I felt. Is that so? <laughs> I never imagined that brat with the silly haircut would try to woo me someday. Do you really still see me as that young prince? You take yourself too seriously, but you're not selfish, even if you are a bit greedy with your sword. They do say you can tell who a person really is from the way they wield their sword. Maybe it's true. I'll think about coming back to the capital, okay? Someday. But as for now, don't you have something more important to worry about? Yes, I do. Stop getting distracted by trivialities. Focus on what actually matters. We'll have plenty of time to flirt when the war is over. Hmm. Happy, you must know that it's rather uncomfortable to be the subject of such an unflinching gaze. We'll have to put up with it for a little while longer. I feel like I can almost remember. Apologies, but I'm not sure what you're referring to. Care to elaborate? I have this sense that we met somewhere, before we were students. But you're the Prince of Fargus, so how could I have met you? I do not recall meeting you previously either. Although, long ago, I sometimes accompanied my father as he traveled the kingdom. Perhaps we crossed paths. Unlikely. I lived in an isolated village in the forest. We didn't have contact with outsiders. After I ran away, I was kidnapped and my kidnapper kept me locked up all day and night. I think I'd remember if the royal family had stopped by for a visit. Kidnapped? What do you mean by that? A lady found me, a helpless runaway, and offered to take me in. She promised to keep me safe. Instead, I became her test subject. She experimented on me with all kinds of spells and rituals. 
I had a roof over my head and plenty to eat, but otherwise it was a pretty bad experience. Mm. This may be unwelcome from a stranger like myself, but I want you to know that it's perfectly acceptable to be angry about such unfortunate circumstances. I can't fathom why someone would cause you pain like that. I'm sorry you had to endure such a thing. You have every right to feel anything you need to feel toward the person responsible for your suffering. Oh, that's weird. Hmm, I wonder... What's the matter? Was it something I said? It's just that I've heard those words before. I think it was someone else who said them, but I can't remember who. Maybe I'll figure it out someday. In the meantime, see you around. Yes, of course. If our meeting again can help you in any way, you need only ask, and I'll be there. I did not expect to see you here, Happy. I get the feeling that you didn't come for training. Listen up, Didi. I remembered something. Remembered? Ah, does this have something to do with why you were staring at me earlier? Not ringing any bells. I stare at people all the time. Anyway, do you know Anselma? Anselma? Yes, of course. But how do you know that name? That is what my stepmother was called in the Empire. In the Kingdom, she was called Patricia. Oh, so that's what it was. I see now. What a relief. It was really sticking in my craw. Well, now that that's all settled, I'm off to bed. Just one moment. You may understand, but I most certainly do not. How did you know my stepmother? She used to visit all the time. I think she was friends with the lady who kidnapped me. Friends? Are you sure? I heard the lady helped bring her to the kingdom, but I don't really know the details. Anyway, when Anselma saw how I was being treated, she got angry, just like you. You remind me a lot of her, actually. Are we really that much alike? I'd say so. Come to think of it, you greet people in the same way, hold a book in the same way, you even get angry in the same way. It's uncanny. I share no blood with my stepmother, but to hear you say that, it pleases me greatly. She was the one who raised me. I suppose it makes sense that we would share certain mannerisms. To think that the person you mentioned was my stepmother is... baffling, to say the least. What do you mean? For all intents and purposes, my stepmother was completely cut off from the outside world. Suffice it to say, few knew that my father had taken a second wife. Sounds... complicated. I can keep my mouth shut if you like. I would very much appreciate your silence on the matter. But thank you, truly, for all that you said. Truth be told, the union between my father and stepmother has given rise to... Uh, much speculation. But for now, what's truly baffling me is the identity of that lady you mentioned. She welcomed my stepmother into the kingdom after she fled home due to political strife. <clears throat> no, I must stop this. It's time to put an end to this discussion. Baseless speculation will get me nowhere. Oh, come on. I finally felt like I understood and then you go and say something cryptic like that. If I can't sleep tonight, I'm blaming you. Well, if that happens, come back here and I'll keep you company. I'll be training a while yet. I wonder... Could Happy's captor truly be her? Happy, I must speak with you. I've realized the woman who held you captive... was Cornelia herself. Oh, yeah. Good on you for figuring it out. You're a little late though, considering she's dead. How are you feeling about what she said, by the way? You seemed pretty upset at the time. It couldn't have been easy to hear all that stuff about your stepmother and the tragedy of Dusker. Whether Cornelia's words prove true or false, any lead is worth following. Hmm. This might not be related, but I remembered something else about your stepmother. She had a daughter. Her daughter was staying in the kingdom at one point, but Anselma couldn't see her. Her daughter? Neither my father nor I knew that the Imperial Princess was in Ferdiad at the time. Oh, 
That's not what I heard. I heard the king wanted to keep the child away from Anselma. So he hid the fact that their daughter was nearby. She believed that father hid it from her? What could he have gained from such a thing? No clue. Sorry, but I'm the wrong person to ask. As she was seeking asylum from the Empire in the Kingdom, Lord Arendel was obligated to hide the Imperial Princess's whereabouts. If her location had gone public, the Empire would have demanded her return. She would undoubtedly have become a political pawn in the Kingdom as well. The decision to hide her was not my father's. I did not realize until much later that the girl I'd met under such strange circumstances was my stepsister. So then, why did Anselma think it was all your father's doing? I can only speculate, but it seems there was a misunderstanding between her and my father. Although she was the Queen Consort, in truth, my father and stepmother were not even allowed the dignity of being alone together, and the one who persistently inserted herself between them was their intermediary, your captor. It was Cornelia herself. She hid it from Anselma. I believe so. Meanwhile, she may have hidden my stepmother's presence from Lord Arendelle as well. If Cornelia caused my stepmother to miss out on seeing them, exhorted her, used her, and then also caused the tragedy... Hmm. I'm surprised she pulled one over on both of them. She was pretty reckless. But in a way, it makes sense. She loved causing pain. That's why she used me and discarded me without a second thought. I fully agree. Countless people have been subjected to undue suffering as a result of her behavior. That is why I would like your help with something, if that's agreeable to you. You are my only hope. If you put it like that, I can't exactly say no, can I? I wish to learn all that you know about Cornelia. If I follow the traces she left behind, perhaps I can finally learn the truth of the tragedy. And perhaps I'll also be able to find a way to lift the curse she placed upon you. Oh, that would be nice. The people from the church couldn't figure out a solution, so I won't get my hopes up. That is perhaps for the best. That said, I am a stubborn man who is not often inclined to give up. I will not allow history to repeat itself, neither the tragedy, nor your own personal torments. If you're going to be so intense about this, I can't help but get my hopes up. But it's not always easy having me by your side. You always need to be on guard. You have my word. Should a thousand beasts raise their claws at me, I will happily send them running. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, Didi. <laughs> Though it might be kind of fun watching you tear those monsters to shreds. <laughs>